This is going to be a quick video focusing on this swirl over here. It's actually quite simple. Um, I'm going to try to do this in a non-destructive manner. So actually, uh, turn this on to 16. So first of all, before we begin, I'm going to tell you why I did, you know, what I just did. Why did I turn that down to 16? Well, um, do you see this thing? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stuff like that. So this has eight layers, right? From top to bottom, there's eight swirls. So it's going to be half of whatever amount you put over here. So for example, if I were to add a cylinder of 32, then there would be 16 swirls. And that's a lot of swirls. I don't want that. This is perfectly fine. Anyway, next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select every other um, edge over here. So you need to do this. I'm sorry, but sometimes you just have to do the, you know, mundane work. Is it mundane? What does mundane even mean? Mundane. Lacking interest or excitement. Yes, it is mundane. Good job, Vasek. Okay, next up, what you're going to do is you're going to press S to scale. Actually, I should probably enable screencast keys, shouldn't I? Over here, you can see whatever buttons I press. All right, so press S to scale, then Shift Z to lock the Z axis, and now you can only scale it in. Scale them out to something like this. It's sort of a star, but not at the same time and then come over here to vertices, add a vertex group, and assign. Now, why did we do that? We're going to talk about that later. For now, what I'm going to do is just come over here to modifiers, and you're going to add simple deform modifiers. Change it to z-axis, and I'm going to add another simple deform modifier, so simple deform, and change this to taper. Now, this is also going to be z-axis, I'm going to add simple deform to my favorites list. So that way I can press Q and have it over here. Okay, so you can probably already guess what's going on. Let's play with the taper first. So I want the taper to be negative because I want the icing to be sort of, well, in this shape. All right, so if I play with the angle over here, you'll see that, okay, it's controlling how much it's twisting. But this is not what we intended. What's going on? Well, what happened is there isn't enough geometry over here. So press Control R and add in some loop cuts over here. The more you add, the more geometry there's going to be for, well, this modifier to play with and the smoother it's going to look. So I'm going to add, well, quite a few. It doesn't, yeah, you shouldn't really be worried about it. Anyway. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to add subsurface divisions. So control two. All right. We added some subsurface divisions. Yeah. Okay. Come over here to the vertex group, select the same vertices, shift E to make them sharper and well, don't make them fully sharp. So not 1.0, something along 0 0.8, 0 0.85. So I'm going to type in 0.8 right now and just save that. Now, if you want to, you can move it up a little bit, but I don't really suggest doing that unless you're going to select this top edge as well. Actually, let's do something. Let's scale the top edge down just a tiny little bit. I'm going to turn on proportional editing over here and go into smooth and then scale it further down. Uh, scroll this in a little bit just to have something like this. All right, now the deeper one that we have over here, um, where is it? This one. It has more to play with. So we can do something like this. Now, something else you can do is scale it all down along the z-axis and increase the angle. Now, let's just taper it a little bit less because I feel like it's a bit too much. And right click it and shade it smooth. And there we have it. We have some really nice looking icing right now. I am not happy with the top edge over here though, so I am going to, well, can I though? Let's just make it small. Let's just make it super small. There we go. And you can also poke the faces. And by poking the faces, you can also do this up here. It might actually be a good idea to just make it a nice pointy nose. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to select those same, you know, some, those same uh, edges that extended. Select those as well, assign all of these, and then Shift E.8. 
just so that shape kind of reaches the top the tip over here you see this one actually why am i even rendering it right now okay so just so it reaches all the way up there now it looks really nice all right that's nice now um something else that i did is you can come over here and add in a particle system i believe this might be way too much so something like 500 500 is still too much so 200 and that's much nicer you can add a particle system to it but you know it doesn't really look good without a base so let's add that shall we the base is quite simple and to be completely honest almost everyone does it the exact same way anyway i'm gonna keep it 32 16 and get into front view edit mode wireframe deselect everything select these and delete them now next up i'm gonna select these and hide them huh what happened It's supposed to hide these nodes as well isn't it there we go all right and now just select a couple of random nodes over here and yes we're gonna do this randomly as well move them up and do something like this and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn off proportional editing select everything and squish it all down and now we're gonna add in one subsurface division. But before I do that, I want to kind of make it a bit more random as well. All right, that looks nice. Um, the top tip over here, it kind of needs a little bit work. Um, and honestly, it's a good idea to just insert Oh, my bad. Maybe if I flatten this, so flatten it, then insert it. Why is insert not working, right? What's going on? Okay, let's just dissolve this vertices, these this vertices, and will insert work? Yeah, okay, insert's working now, and then poke it. All right. Actually, um, that's perfectly fine. Just right click it and shade it smooth. Okay, so that's the top of the, you know, cupcake. Now, um, Alt H. I am going to select this edge, move it back up, scale it down a little bit. Just a little bit though. And extrude it down. And from here on out, it's going to be straight down just a little bit. Press F to add a face at the bottom. Press I to insert it. And just make it like this. I'm going to add another loop cut though. Um, around here should be fine. And this looks decent enough. So, hide all of this. Oh, my bad. So deselect everything hide all of this stuff okay select every other one because i want there to be uh, you know how cupcakes have those little creases the wavy pattern along the edge i kind of want that over here as well Fill it along the z-axis and now unhide everything Hmm. No. Scale it along the z-axis. Make it creasy. Make it full crease. What if we make it smaller? That's much better. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these shift d duplicate well p to send it into another thing and select all scale it up i'm going to give this another material right now oh 
My bad, I accidentally pressed 2. Okay, I'm not a fan of this. I don't like those hotkeys. Hey, uh, Vasek here. I kind of forgot to talk during this part, these 10-15 seconds. Basically, I'm trying to match the paper cover to the cupcake as much as possible. Try to get it as close to the actual cake as possible without clipping the cake through it. You don't want the cake to, you know, be clipping through the paper. That's, yeah, that's not really something you want. Anyway, back to old Vasek. Okay, um, let me make this the cup material. What's the cup material, by the way? Oh, it's just 003. All right, that's kind of sad because, yeah. Let's make this the bread. And lower this down on it, but make it smaller, obviously. Um, I am going to do this and then move it up. Move it up. The way I like to do it is that both of these two things are going to be parented to the cake itself. From the top, and there we go. Now it is a different shape and it's actually smaller. You can probably guess how I made these ones. I made the cup first and I made this later. You can see it's, it doesn't really have any ridges or anything else on them. You don't really have to worry about it at all. All right, so this is a cute little cupcake that we just made. Um, by the way, I almost forgot. We didn't really give this, you know, any material. So uh, let's quickly do that as well. Now, do you remember we made a vertex group over here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, well, vertex paint. We're gonna paint and vertex color from weight. So what that does is, look at this, black to white. Now, I didn't really do this in my other thingies, like the ones back here, but I'm gonna do it in this one. Let's do it. Let's go into shading and we're gonna press zero, come over here, paint this to rendered. Now this can stay whatever it is right now. I don't really mind. And let's add in a material. Let's quickly check if it's the same thing. Yes, it is. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in an attribute node and let's do col call. And I believe that's what it is, right? That's the attribute. Yeah, there you go, the vertex color col. All right, now color ramp and connect that over here and connect this to this thing. Um, so before you watch this last part, I'm gonna say this right now Indecisiveness and inability to choose a color and this entire workflow is completely normal Everyone has that. I just left this in. I could have cut this entire part out, but I left it in You can maybe see how I think. Have fun All right now This is gonna be super simple This color is gonna be the insides so I want this to be something like a chocolatey. Uh, there we go, but darker, make it darker. All right, that's nice. And this color is gonna be the outside edges and I want this to be chocolatey, but also not something like this. Um, but now the cake is way too chocolatey. Um, okay, some things, some things, sometimes you just have to do this. Where's the other bread? No, no, just no. We're gonna do the bread uh, thing in another. We're gonna do the bread material in another video. That's yeah. Don't worry about that. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, you can do swirls like that, but I don't want to. Uh, this thing. Make it darker. That's nice and cute. What if I want it to be vanilla? 
What if I want it to be vanilla flavored with some chocolates at the edge? Can we do that? Brown is so hard to do. I'm not kidding. Brown is an insanely hard color for me for some reason. I'm not good at brown, but maybe I am. Who knows? Oh my god. That looks yummy. That looks yummy, but the colors don't work. God, I want that. It's the colors, they just don't work. I mean, it's supposed to be a cupcake, right? Cupcakes are cute, no matter what. Okay, so this is what I ended up deciding on. Let me know if you want anything else from this scene, though. Let me show you this scene one last time as well. So this was the final thing. If you were interested in anything else, feel free to let me know. But yeah, I'm going to render this out, put a nice little image on the screen right now that you see when I'm talking. And yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.